Thus, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Father. As Catholics, and I mentioned this principle before, according to St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit, it takes an intelligent man and woman to read the Gospel, the Word of God. So when we read the Word of God, we're not just reading it, but we watch the Word, we watch what Jesus does and whatever happened in, in the stories. We watch and what it does and what it does to us and how we react. Now, may I ask you, if you fill in the blank, okay? The gospel today is about what in the blank? What is it about? Generosity. I just read it for you. Generosity. What is it? Generosity. Generosity. One person said generosity. Second? Justice. Justice. Okay, third one? Mercy. Mercy. Anyone, anyone else? Justice, mercy, generosity, anything else? Love. 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 Love, okay. Anything else? Now let us watch again, okay? Watch what Jesus did. The kingdom of heaven. That's the first word he said. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven. What is it about? The kingdom, kingdom of, of heaven. heaven. <laughs> Justice, generosity, and mercy, and all those things. The kingdom of heaven. Now that means we have to watch once again. Who wants to go into heaven? Who wants to go to heaven? Hand up, please. Okay. <laughs> Are you prepared? <laughs> what is it? You see, we know it's about the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus told this parable, and he, he, he reveals to us what it is all about. So what is the kingdom of heaven all about? Justice, mercy, generosity? Is, it, is that the thing? Is it true? Oh, well, depends on you. Okay, now let's take a look at Jesus' word, what he says. Okay. I have uh, adopted many children, and some of them are doctors, some of them are lawyers, some of them are, and they're, 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 I don't know how, but uh, you know, kids, they grow up. And uh, they keep telling me, you know, this kid, uh, she is a doctor, her wage for a day wage or two days wage is my salary for a whole month, you know. That. <laughs> and I don't know why. These kids, they, they said they don't have enough money to live on. They spend a lot. And they go, they go to the hospital and they tell, they tell me this, Father, Papa, why do you see these people, doctors and ER doctors? These people, they live and they die, but they are not preparing for death at all. What's going on? The description is that it is in inevitable. Death is coming, whether I like it or not, you like it or not. Okay? But we prepare for a lot of things, but we're not. Somehow we kind of blind ourselves. We don't prepare for the ultimate end of this life. And when, when yes, a doctor is a scientist, you know, she told me, I see this is, this is a reality, but people don't prepare for it. How? Especially now, asking the question of, for the Catholics, for the Christians, are we prepared for the ultimate? And what do we do? Now, suppose we apply this, the kingdom of God is life. The kingdom of God is this life of Jesus Christ. And in order to enter into this vineyard, which is the kingdom of God, and work for this landowner with God, and of course, being in the kingdom of God is being in this vineyard, working for God and being heaven. What are we willing to do? Are we prepared for it? The question is that. So, now, you can ask the question about fairness or justice. The justice of God is so different from the fairness of, of uh, our human, uh, based on our human criteria. I'm asking myself, what is the wage? What is the wage of the kingdom of God? God gives each person his daily wage. Okay, and what is that wage? What is that wage that you can live by? 
You look at it and you see it. This wage is eternal life. Eternal life. Are we prepared for it? Those servants, those hirelings, if they stay outside of the vineyard, they will go hungry. They will die. And their family will die. They get inside, they get the wage. But still, there are complaints. We ask ourselves the question, are we complaining? Now, I got this, uh, I, I got this uh, from a nun before I joined the Redemptorist uh, religious life. And uh, since we enter into this life, we are hired, we're highly, we're hired by God. We work, we serve God, Jesus Christ, in the church, we do, we do that. But sometimes, you know, some people do not feel it is enough to have God as the wage. So this, uh, this uh, nun, I went to visit, my mom brought me to uh, this uh, convent in Canada, St. Boniface, Manitoba, and every, every week I came there and served and talked uh, with the, the, the nun. This was in 1986. Uh, and one of the young nuns told me, you know, I entered into this convent, this, mon this uh, religious life, and I saw a lot, a lot of smart people, intelligent people, very, very talented nuns and holy nuns, but somehow they just keep leaving convent religious life. She has to ask the question, what is going on here? These nuns are supposed to be like my model, like, you know, like the saints, but suddenly they left. They will continue on with the, with the religious life, a following God, a bind, a bound to God. And ultimately she had to ask the question and challenge herself. The one question is this, is Jesus enough for me? That's all. Is Jesus enough for me? Our wages, our wage is Jesus Christ. Is Jesus enough for you? If Jesus is not enough, then nothing is enough. That wage, daily wage, we receive at Holy Communion, Jesus Christ Himself, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. This is my body. And this is the chalice of my blood, the blood, the new and eternal covenant, which will pour out, be poured out for you. For many, for the forgiveness of sins. This is a wage for us. Jesus Christ is He enough for us. And if we put this into the proper perspective, and why don't Catholics come and receive this eternal life every day? At the moment of death, people are worrying about it. Yesterday I mentioned that people are worrying about dividing the property and the will and all those things and prepare for, for death, but not preparing for life. And I came many times, not here. I came, I drove a long way. I came and I brought Jesus, the Holy Eucharist. And suppose I have cancer, or suppose I know I'm going to die. And Jesus, you know, the body of Christ is there. I'm going to receive him anyway. Even if I die, I die with him. But some do not understand that you know, we cannot receive Holy Eucharist. But he's there. Only anointing, yes. Confession, oh, no need. I'm asking myself, are we prepared? Not just for death, but for life. The wages is himself, Jesus Christ. Is he enough for us? Oh, we're going to complain, mumble. Oh, this person entered... You know, for, worked only one hour, and this person received Jesus. And that person worked like 12 hours, also the same Jesus. Well, we ask the question, is it fair? No, it is not fair. But is it just? It is just because Jesus is our life, our salvation. That is all. That is all. Are we prepared to receive Him? Are we prepared to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Let us pray and let us prepare for ourselves. Now, St. Teresa of Lisieux, remember when the people asked how could we be happy in heaven? And remember, she told the, the nun, she was an assistant, a novice master, remember? And uh, she asked uh, the nun, the novices, to bring out you know, different kind of uh, wine glasses. And she asked the, uh, the, the, the nuns to fill it in. 
little wine glass and big one, middle one, tall one. And when it's filled, every, every one, every glass is, is filled. If I'm small, I am filled. And I'm big, I'm filled. I have enough for myself. That everybody is filled and filled to the full. That is, when you see Jesus Christ, you are filled the same way. But I cannot eat, eat two, three pieces of steak. I can eat one, you know. Some people can eat a lot. Some people eat a little. But everybody is filled as long as we have Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.